G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world. And lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. G'day viewers and welcome to Colour in Your Life in New Zealand. Now the team and I have come over to New Zealand, we're going to be spending a couple of weeks here and we're circumnavigating the South Island of New Zealand to get some of the great artists of New Zealand onto the show. We're going to have a fantastic time and as you can see, look at this country. It's just amazing. So we're going to wake our way all the way around the bottom of the South Island and see some of these incredible people. So come along for the ride, it's going to be fantastic. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. We are in a beautiful little town called Glen Orkey in the South Island of New Zealand, up the road from Queenstown. And I'm with a gentleman named Mr. John Crump. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank um, you very much. John, without a doubt, is probably one of the foremost landscape artists that this country has. Uh, his work is so amazingly iconic when it comes to capturing the beauty, I mean, the absolute magnificent beauty of New Zealand and as we go through the show you're obviously going to see we're going to be doing some plain air painting with you today. Yep. Now in our discussions over the phone you were telling me at one stage obviously you started out your career 40 years now which you've been doing this as a professional artist but at one stage you were actually working in a studio. Yes, one so of your directors said something to you about you know what you need to get outside. That's right. Tell yes. me a bit about that. Well I was exhibiting with a gallery in Wellington uh -huh. and, and the owner Gordon said to me one time your paintings are starting to look formulaic you know they're, you're doing yeah. the same thing too often. So he arranged for an Australian artist to take me up painting. Okay. A fellow who was committed to plein air work Les Campbell and uh, he was a good painter we went away on a trip together for the first uh, part of that trip, it was a nightmare. I yeah. just couldn't catch up. Yeah. I was too slow. Um, he would be whistling away and happy as finishing off his work and I was still getting started <laughs> because I was so used to taking my time. But, you've, you've, uh, but you've over really... that month, Sorry. I sped up yeah. and uh, I discovered that my work was getting better and better outdoors. Okay. I'd always been scared of outdoors. Yeah. I'd tried it once. The easel blew away with the painting with it and all this sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, so things were coming right. Les had shown me a, an easel design, uh, which I still use, and um, things resolved themselves and I've never gone back to being a studio painter. 90, 95% of the time I worked out, outdoors. 5% um, of the time, maybe, I'm yeah. guessing, I work inside because I've got a commission to do that's sort of a thing that I can't go and um, get the subject on sure. site. Or, the weather's been foul and I'll mm. use a small painting that I've done outdoors and blow it up or something like that. Sure, yeah. but you've yeah. become a master without a doubt. I mean, you, John, as we've travelled around New Zealand, and you mentioned John's name and everybody knows who John Crump is as far as art is concerned. So, but you can obviously see with the beauty of the area that you live in, I mean, the magnificence of this countryside is extraordinary, it is. isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is just fantastic. But we're going to go out today uh, with John to a location that you've picked out. Now, yes. it's of a, a farmhouse somewhere, is that Old correct? farm buildings, uh, okay. old shearing shed. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to go out there today and John's going to show us how he does plain air. I, I would say distinctly your style uh, is, is very broad. I mean, you, you are not afraid to put the paint down. Should I explain that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. In the very early days of my painting, mm -hmm. uh, Kay and I, my wife, had just got, got married and I decided that I had had all this training at art school mm -hmm. and had even been a graphic artist for a couple of years and I then decided to go teaching. And so I was doing painting as a hobby, weekends and evenings and so on. Yeah. And uh, I started off just as bad as anybody else. 
I knew I wasn't painting that well. I yeah. mean, I'd seen other art and knew that it wasn't my, my stuff wasn't up to standard. And so I started going into McGregor Wright Gallery uh, in Wellington on Friday nights, and it was quite a trip. But I was committed to improving. Yeah. And so I went in there, and I would spend perhaps an hour or two gazing at the paintings on the walls. And by nature, I'm very careful and finickety, and I used to build model aircraft radio models, and yeah. everything had to be right. Yeah. And uh, so that started to come through in my paintings, uh, very careful work. But I noticed when I went and looked at the guys in the McGregor Wright Gallery, the ones that appealed to me were the ones that had confidence and the paint stroked on easily yes, yes. and all that sort of thing. And uh, I thought, that's the way I want to paint really. Yeah. I don't want to try and look like a photo. I want my paint to have a distinct, paintings to have a distinctive style mm. because of the brushwork. And so I guess they, those guys back then, Peter McIntyre and all oh, those, David Paul Shepard, you have keen on as well. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, a fellow uh, Dom Nielsen mm. from the Wairarapa mm -hmm. and other artists overseas. Um, Richard Smith would be a good one that comes to mind, and mm -hmm. Emile Groupe, guys like that. And I, I looked at all their work and studied it, saw how they did it, did my trips to uh, Wellington every Friday, yeah. and uh, gradually started to develop. And that's why I think now, and of course, I should go back a step, uh, when Les started taking me outside, uh, you had to be quick. Yeah. And uh, you want to capture the light in that moment when it really appealed to you. Uh, not sort of spend all day doing the painting and changing with the light. You've got to be quick. Sure. And so I learnt the techniques to do that, putting in the shadows and the darks first and all that sort of thing so that you f sort of freeze the light. And of course, you're going like crazy. Yeah, I bet. So, we're going to so see it. Big strokes. <laughs> big strokes. So, uh, but we're, we're going to go out and actually see this. I mean, I'm excited for a start because when you look at John's work, you go, my God, this is amazing. But I'm very excited to see how you do this. So let's get in the four wheel drive yep. and we'll head out into the country and have a look at this farmhouse. Sounds good. Thanks, great. See you out there, guys. You've got a pretty good setup here, John. Sort of like this is what it's like to plain air paint. Yep. Particularly with all this, I mean, it's just fantastic. There's one thing I can't stand, Graham. It's yeah. working in a shambles. Yeah. No, it's very, very well organised, so, isn't it? So you, you mean you've literally got? Yep. Everything you just there. set up. You set your easel up, and away yep. you go. This is tremendous. That's what I'm looking for. So what you? Oh, there you go. I knew I had a canvas to do this building on. It's uh, linen, is it? Linen canvas. Yeah. yeah it's uh, an American canvas made by Fredericks. Yeah. And it's nice. This easel is a great design. It's not my design, as I think I said, but it works so well, and it can stand. It's quite a heavy easel, so that it can stand quite strong wind. Doesn't worry it. Right. Here's the pallet. It's a great, great little piece of and there equipment. It is. Sensational, isn't there, it? There's what holds the canvas. And you're ready to go. Yeah. All right, John, let's start another crump masterpiece. Now I'm just mixing myself a very thin coat of blue yep. just to sketch out the scene. Now what I've got to do is position it. That's my focal point, obviously. Yep. So what I need to do, decide now is where am I going to put it in this painting? This is, I, I don't go to a lot of fuss with this, this pr preliminary sketch because it only gets hidden under paint anyway. Yeah. Uh, you may be thinking, why so high on the canvas? You've got all this blank canvas down here. But I love the idea of being able to lead the viewer into the picture. Sure, sure. And that sort of, that, that blue that you're putting down, it's not going to greatly affect the colours that you put on top no, of it? No, not really. Okay. And, and because I've thinned it so much, yeah. um, it, it will dry quick anyway. Okay. And you've just got you've just got terps in there, or, or uh, no? Or no, liquid? I'm using Liquin. Okay. Windsor and Newton product. Okay. I find it very good. It's a good dryer. Yep. I, I like the texture it gives the paints. Yep. And I can I can whip uh, my my paint my painting that I've done the previous day. I can whip it out and take it off the panel that it's attached to okay. the next the next morning, really. Oh, that's and it's fine. Yeah. Now I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking, I wish I hadn't made it quite so big. See that there? Yep. Look at that. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. You'd think I'd measured it. <laughs> <laughs> you've, well, been that, doing, you've been doing this for a while, but. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I don't want. That's the annoying part. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm going to reduce the size of the buildings slightly, move them slightly to the left, yeah. but also reduce the size of them a bit so that I get it well off centre and just push them back a bit. Our door is going to be, our big black hole in the wall is going to be about there and under the feet on this building there's a, there's a, I presume it's a ventilation gap. Yeah, yeah. Must be cold to work in there in the winter. Boy. Now I'm, I'm, that dark tree over there, I'm going to drag that in and bring this lighter willow or whatever it is in here. We've got that dark, we've still got that dark, um, Macrocarpa up in there, and we've got another tree. I don't actually need it all that much, but in there is another tree. Right, here we go. Now the first step in outdoor painting yep. is to give your, your eyes a register of tone. Now what do I mean by that? This, this isn't a pure white canvas anymore, sure. but it was a pure white canvas. It's just been dirtied by a previous painting. Yeah. But normally that would be white, and that would be as white as you could get. So that would be a highlight, and, and actually that's pretty light. Yeah. The, the next tone you want to know about is your darkest dark. And so, because that then allows you to judge the uh, tones in between. What the darks do, of course, is they also, they, uh, today we don't actually need to worry too much about shifting light. Yeah. I'd rather we did have to. But normally, when you, when you get all your shadows in like this, and your darks and things, it also freezes the light, which is a very handy thing. Yeah. You don't need to worry about the light moving after that. Now that brush I've been using has been dealing with a lot of reds and warms yeah. and so on. And, and I want to whack in basically my next darkest dark. So what I'm doing now is mixing a colour that I can use for my um, macrocarpa in the back. Yep. That's going to go in there, and I'm getting that in quick, early in the piece. And there's a good reason for that. I'm making, I'm making a bit of a meal of it in a way. I'm, I'm really going to make it a fairly solid dark tree. Yeah. Because it forms a lovely background for the roofs in front of it. Graham, these sand flies are going to drive me silly. Can I get you to chuck us my hat, please? I'll mate? grab that hat for you, mate. There you go. Thank you. I try to tell people at classes, don't assume that your colour is right. Here we are out in this huge surrounding, mm. big environment. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to condense it onto this little wee panel and get the same impact as we feel here. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow to be too accurate with the colour can often appear dull when you're finished. Now I think I'm going to paint that that light orange coloured roof next. Okay. Now you'll notice that there's a, a tree out in front of the building. Yeah. And I, I am going to reduce it to a minimum. Artistic uh, license. Uh, yes, um, it's got leaves on. I happen to know that in the winter, of course, that tree loses its leaves. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't have to be uh, super careful about representing it exactly. But it's, it's coming across it's cutting across the building uh, with all its leaves on. I can convey it just as nicely later as just a skeleton of a tree. Yeah. Not that I have to put it in. Let's face it, I can do what I like. So but, how, many, how many times would you have painted this particular scene? I think this is probably, probably the fourth time from okay. different angles. Each painting's been from a different angle or a different spot. But I mean, in this valley that you live in, there's a, there's a painting every time you turn around. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, my intention was to do a mountain scene today if we could have, um, but seeing as, seeing as it's so flat, that, yeah. was, that was out. So uh, one of the things I had discovered, I take quite a few people out painting on painting treks and yep. lessons, and um, uh, one of the things I'm aware of is so often uh, if you go out on a flat day, there's very little that you can find to paint yeah. if, if you're intent on doing mountains. But if you, if you decide to take an old sheds and all that sort of thing, there's heaps especially around Arrowtown and places like that, old stone buildings that look really good. I love broken colour. See, I'm just adding wee yeah. patches of colour in here and there, just, just to give the, colour, the area more interest than if you just paint it absolutely straight, and, you know, flattish. And you were just saying, which I think is interesting, I mean, with a, an artist of your calibre, that you do art treks. Yes. And I think that's, uh, honestly, with the... With the beauty of the country here and your vast experience, and you know one of the 
one of the greatest artists that New Zealand's got. I, mean, I think people would be crazy not to come and do this with you. Well, I do really enjoy taking people out painting, Graham. Yep. Um, it's it's beaut. Uh, I, I don't take big numbers these days, but uh, I feel that in, in fact, of course, people probably get more of my attention without too big a numbers. But the other thing is that I've, I, I feel that, my experience anyway, over the years I've discovered that a demo, painting demonstration, is one of the best ways there is to learn how yes, to paint. Absolutely. You can't beat it because you can watch somebody else uh, overcoming many of the problems that you've met and don't know how to solve and you can see them doing it. I can see that you've actually got a lot of, lot of colour on your, uh, your palette there. Do you ever clean that at all or you just sort of use those colours to sort of ride over each other? These colours are all clean colours. Uh, they're beautiful, pure colour. Mm -hmm. So it's quite hard to make them become muddy, as you say. Yep. When I'm deciding what colours I want, I am not, I am not saying what is the exact colour of that hill. Yep. See, when I look at that hill, it's actually slightly darker and more blue. It's actually closer to that colour. But I wanted that colour to be a bit darker because I wanted to bring this roof out you see, and make it project forward, give the painting depth. So I'm not considering what's the exact colour of that hill, I'm considering what does my painting need. That's the crucial bit. You're in a few galleries, I think you're in one in Wellington, but obviously because of the GFC in the last few years, it's been pretty tough on, on all the artists, hasn't it? Yes, I, I was with uh, five artists, uh, five galleries at one stage, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they've all gone. Uh, sad really. I've just been very grateful that I've got my own gallery mm. at home that's kept me going. Yeah. And I'm actually becoming involved with a couple of other new galleries now. So one in Wanaka just over the hill a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, it's, it's a tough game these days I think, being a gallery, because the, the rents are so high, the power, the staff, everything's so expensive. You don't have to be very short of sales to for it start, to start to really hurt. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's tough. When I'm doing fence lines like I am here, mm -hmm. I quite enjoy it. When we look across at those fence lines, you can see there's a little bead of light along the top yes, all the yes, time. Yes, yes, And after I've done a few darker strokes like that, that I'm just using to, uh, the, the color of the timber there, yeah is actually so similar to the background, everything in the back, that it's, it's not that obvious. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is darkened it and dragged it forward, and now what I can do if I want to, I can just pick out the odd, that's the odd little top bit. Still very effective though. See, this is where the uh, artistic license comes in. Very much so. You see, I love that. Really just getting the effect of that grass with that one big broad brush stroke. Yep. One of the things that Richard Smith, Brilliant. I guess, taught me through watching his videos yeah. was that soft and hard edges are so important. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people don't, don't realise that when they, especially if they're painting from photos, they sit down at home and they start labouring away, copying a photo, yep. and, and they're considering every little bit as they go yep. and, and so they tend to give equal attention to everything because they're, they're sort of, uh, um, unless they are a reasonably accomplished artist who's aware of these things and has seen enough stuff to realise, when we focus our eyes in on something, uh, everything else becomes blurred. Mm -hmm. We don't see it sharply, it's only the very narrowest bit of, and that's of course why we shift our eyes and shift our heads mm. because we're focusing on one little bit. I think it's about five degrees, isn't it, mm -hmm. of clear vision. Yep. And, and so when you start painting a thing like this, I want the eye to go to here. So that's my sharpest area now. I, I don't know whether you've noticed, but as I've been painting, I've been occasionally grabbing a clean brush or a cleanish brush. Yep. And you can see what I've done here. I've whisked across it so that the eye doesn't go to the, the, any hard edges there. Yes. You can see how quiet and gentle all those edges are, really. Um, and back in here, it's all fairly, actually um, that, that tree there is really starting to irritate me, it's going to have to go. Um, because notice it's, it's competing, 
See, see that? Mm. How it's, one's fighting with the other? Sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape that off. It, it really sort of focused the picture back in again, just by doing that. And by removing that dark tree? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. come back into the middle of the picture now. You notice I use, uh, I use the big brushes a lot just to flick up, not drawing in. You'll, you'll see a lot of painters doing this the hard way with small brushes and putting in zillions of blades of grass, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not for me because as an outdoor painter, you haven't got time for that. Okay, John, you're making some amazing progress there, bud, but I think I might just let you work for a little while and we'll just uh, amaze the audience with your brilliant ability. Thank you, Graham. Great day, mate. Really, really great day. Thank you so oh, much for being on the show. Thank it's you. tremendous. You know, the rest of the world is going to be able to see the talent of this amazing man. But we're going to take off the tape, haven't we, to really expose we do, this. We do. So yes, let's do if it. If we can do that, be able to see the line. Yes. It be sensational. There's nothing like this. This is the big thrill, the big moment, when you feel you've got a painting, to there reveal it with a clean edge, because it makes the world of difference to it. Fan. Can you see that? Fantastic. It just tidies everything up and looks man. better. One of New Zealand's leading artists, uh, one of the best landscape artists I've seen in a long time, pal. That was just amazing what you did today. Thank you. Your website address is? johncrump.co.nz And John, you've also got some really great DVDs available as well. John Crump Painting the Great Outdoors and Painting Landscapes with John Crump. I think they were fabulous for anybody's collection. So go to John's website and uh, pick up some of those as well. Thank you so much again. It's been just an amazing day with a very, very talented man. Now you can come and see all of our great artists, John included, on the website at colourinyourlife.com.au. Go to our Facebook page at Colour in Your Life as well. We're going to continue our journey around this magnificent country of New Zealand, the South Island anyway. We're going to head north again, but uh, fantastic time, mate. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been and great. as we always say, remember guys, Make sure you put some colour in your life. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye. See you guys. Bye.